in the National Football League. Brian Billick now in his seventh year, already a Super Bowl winner, but he has missed the playoffs two of the last three seasons. And Tony Dungy has to be in an outstanding mood tonight. He just received a three year contract extension. He is tied up with the Indianapolis Colts until 2009, and hopefully, for all of us who enjoy pro football for longer than that. I'll what tell you, that is one smart move that they made by keeping this guy as their head coach. When you've got a great coach, you want to keep him. That's like keeping around great players. And what a crazy weekend to start the NFL season. Some odd scores. Wow. Rainer will handle the kickoffs, the rookie out of Michigan State. This is B.J. Sams, who was very good a year ago as a punt and kick returner for the Ravens. And Baltimore will get the ball first. We're underway. Sams from the one. 20. And out of bounds short of the 30. They'll start with two tight ends. Wilcox is the blocking back, number 83, with Jamal Lewis, the deep man, and he'll get the first carry as expected, and Lewis lumbers across the 35 to the 36. Lewis pushed back, may have gotten a half a yard on that. David Thornton out of North Carolina was the first man to hit him and got some help. The numbers on Jamal Lewis, this was with five games missed a year ago, only two years removed from that 2,000-yard season, and he still averaged over four yards a carry. This is where you'd think with the size of the offensive line of the Baltimore Ravens that they would run at Dwight Freeney. You've got Jonathan Ogden at 345, Freeney at about 270, so look for him to run left. Ovi Mahaley is in there as a blocking back. Lewis a little stutter step. And he should have enough for the first down. This is a team that is built to run the football. Joe, you mentioned that enormous offensive line. And like most offensive linemen, they would rather run it. But they're much more proficient at it. But they're going to have to become better pass blockers. Just like if the Ravens want to get to the Super Bowl or they want to get into the playoffs, they're going to have to be a more efficient throwing team. When you say they're a running team, it is it amazing that Jamal carries the ball the first three times? <laughs> yeah. What a surprise. I think this one's a pass or play action. Bowler fakes. Good protection. Rifles, and that one is complete. The first catch for Derek Mason as a Raven. 16 yards on the reception. That's why they brought in Derek Mason, because he adds a decisiveness to the passing game. On this play, you run it three times, so fake it to Jamal. Get the linebackers up, and then Kyle Bowler does a nice job of getting rid of the football. And, and this is the thing for Kyle Bowler. He's just got to, now he should be able to relax. He's got his first completion. They have a little bit of a concern when he gets jacked up too much and gets a little outside himself. Lewis. Hit at the line and dragged down. Good stop by Gary Brackett, number 58, who was taken over the middle linebacking job. You know, the one thing about Kyle, Kyle Bowler that just when he sits down, you know, he's, he's a little hyper. <laughs> <laughs> he's very hyper. But I, you know, the thing about it is he really realizes that this team rides on his shoulders. And he has accepted that. All the bad press about him. The only thing that anybody ever says good about him is that he's a tough kid. And he's tired of hearing it. And these fans, based on the preseason, are just waiting to boo him if things don't go right. Here's the screen, and it's incomplete, intended for Chester Taylor. That play didn't have any rhythm to it whatsoever. Well, that was going to be a screen off of the reverse, and this is something that Jim Fossil, their new offensive coordinator, likes to do. He likes to mix things up. I had a chance to visit with Jim on Friday, and it's the first time he's been back calling plays in a couple of years, was a consultant to the Ravens a year ago, and really only went to dinner with Kyle Bowler on Monday night and hung around to help a little bit with game plans on Tuesday and was gone. Mark Clayton, number 89, the rookie wide receiver from Oklahoma, is in the ballgame. As a third wide receiver, it looked like Ogden moved early. Bowler with a deep throw. Harper knocked it away, and it's intercepted by Brackett. Looked like he picked it right off the top of the turf. 
I'm going to tell you, they're going to call him down. But I'll tell you what, Harper, you talk about an outstanding play. Harper knows that he can't intercept the ball. So what he really does is knock the ball forward and keeps the ball alive so Brackett can intercept it. Keep Look in mind, at this play. Harper's keep it giving up eight inches. Eight inches to Clarence Moore. He still gets up and has the ability to knock it off. And that's why Gary Brackett is playing middle linebacker instead of Rob Morris because he can get back a little quicker. We've got a timeout on the field. The Ravens opening drive stopped by the interception. Back in Baltimore, they have turned it over, given the football to the Indianapolis Colts, who will take over to 23. A lot of pointing going on, isn't there? Edger and James. Suggs crashes down. <laughs> Look at this defense move around. Dressed in all black. Manning. Wayne makes the catch up to the 38th. That'll be a first down. This will be a chess match for four quarters. The intelligence of the Colts offense against the intelligence of the Ravens defense. Manning steps up in the pocket and throws underneath. Harrison with his first grab. Has anyone ever had a better year than Peyton Manning did a season ago? Joe, as a quarterback, I got to ask you, I never saw anything like it. Well, it's the touchdown passes that are impressive, but it's the interceptions, how low they are. That's what sets him apart. James, they stretch it out, and he still gets a couple, maybe a yard shy of a first down. You know, isn't it isn't it uh, unreal when you talk to Ray Lewis and you talk about you got Peyton Manning throws 49 touchdowns a year ago, and the first thing that Ray Lewis says says this is the motor for this football team. Edwin James is the guy. If we can't stop him, we can't stop Indianapolis, and it's incredible. And he I, says all you have to do is go back and watch the film. They is, throw a swing pass to him. They give it to him on a draw play or something else. This is where you have to be careful of play action with them trying to go to Marvin Harrison one-on-one. -on -one. They did it last year. James behind Mungro. First down and more. He's down to the 43-yard line. Mungro playing fullback. He's listed at 214. He's probably 190. Peyton Manning said he's the toughest 190-pound fullback in this league. Uh, watch Mungro. Now, he gets out in front. Look at this. Edwin James is falling. Look at that block, and that's on Ray Lewis. You got to admit he's willing. Oh, man. They said he's the toughest 190 pounds they've seen. Manning to the shotgun. This is the Colts' first possession. Pressure. Manning throws. Wayne can't hold it. He had beaten Samari Roll. Ed Reed came over and gave him some help on the underthrown pass. He had a shot at it. I just love the way Peyton Manning attacks defenses. He doesn't matter. The fact that Samari Roll is not looking back is why Peyton Manning threw this. He counts on Reggie Wayne going up to make the play for him. Remember also, Rex Ryan is the new defensive coordinator of the Baltimore Ravens. So these guys haven't played a lot in preseason together, nor do they have all the communications down for the defense. Suggs comes in a hurry, and Manning just throws it away. Well, I'll tell you what. They're looking for intentional grounding, but the only problem is that there was a that, that Reggie Wayne was in the area. So where he, Peyton Manning was really smart because he sees Suggs coming. Look at him. He throws this ball away. Suggs was there in a heartbeat. This is where the noise has a problem. The offensive linemen have to pick up the communications. That time, Ryan Loser, their left guard, did not drop out and make a block. 70,000 on their feet in Baltimore. Well, here's where you have to be really careful about Edger and James. And Manning has to use a timeout. He's missing one of his weapons. Dallas Clark, the tight end, is out, but there's plenty left in the cylinder. 
images of the great Dan uh, or the great Johnny Unitas. This marks the third anniversary of his death. He played 17 years here in Baltimore. I was going to say he and Dan Marino, the best two I ever saw. Had a chance to meet his young daughter with the Raven organization uh, just the other day. Brandon Stokely in as the third wide receiver. James is the single back manning to the shotgun. Underneath, Edger and James diving for the sticks. A Davis Thomas was out there. So was Anthony Weaver, the oh, Michael, defensive end. Michael, I said the one guy you just, and even Ray Lewis told us, the one guy you can never forget about is number 32. Now, Peyton Manning looks over the field. Look at how open he is. Now, watch what he does to stretch himself out. He's got the first down. Look at the pre staff movement that they have. Look at the defense moving all over the place, but they forgot one guy. That's number 32. Look at when he comes out into the flat. There's nobody really on him, and he gets the first down. I mean, you've got to look. They're not giving him the first down, but I'll tell you what. When he dove, he was in bounds, and that ball was beyond the mark. I thought he got past it, too. I did, too. I mean, I, see, to me, it, I would go for it, but I wouldn't go for it running the football. I would I would go for it and throw the football because I think the Ravens will give you that much room and if I'm Peyton Manning I just call Tom Moore the offensive coordinator and Peyton Manning are in their eighth year together Tony Dungy is not going to back off I don't think that the Colts are afraid of the Raven offense so why not take a chance here fourth and inches out of the eye only one wide receiver that's Marvin Harrison Edgerin, close, real close. I don't think that the ball, uh, that the Indianapolis Colts are built to run short yardage plays like this. I, I'm not sure whether he got it or not, but when you're going to stick James Mungrone up there, I mean, five foot nine, he's going to give you as much as he can, but I'm not sure if he can get enough movement up front. Well, he went in to block in the hole, but he missed whoever was in the hole. They had to get the ball to the 33-yard line. They're short, Paul. I'm, I'm going out. I'm going to take my first swing at it this year. They're short. What do you think? Well, come on, come on, come on. Well, speaking of short, you would know. <laughs> I think they turn it up. And defense held. Joe's one for one. We'll be back in a minute. The chess match continues. Peyton Manning and the Colts offense, Ray Lewis and the Ravens defense. And what does this have to feel like for the Ravens fans to look down there and see those Colts uniforms? Those were their uniforms for so many years. Yeah, but it's been 10 years. Bowler out in the flat completes that one to Dan Wilcox, who is drilled as soon as he got it. Let's go to Susie. Well, Mike, Brian Billick loves to defend his young quarterback. And in, among some of the adjectives he uses, he's a great athlete. He's a gym rat. He studies hard. But then there's that frenetic pace that you guys were talking about. Kyle knows he has to slow down. So one of the things he does, he writes a message on the underside of his wristbands. I asked him before the game, what does it say tonight? It says smooth. That reminds him to just stay calm in the pocket and slow down. All right, Suze, he's had success with that before. Boy, it was free to quick off the ball. Lewis on the delay, breaking tackles across midfield. Submarine at the 40. This guy is 245 pounds, and when he came in to meet with us the other day, he looked like he couldn't have been any more than 215. All right, when you look at him, just watch his feet now. I'm telling you, this guy never stopped. They lost him in the backfield. All right, here comes Freeney around Jonathan Ogden. He misses. Triplet, he also, Triplet misses number 75. He's the guy that misses him in the backfield. But you're not going to bring him down with one arm. I don't care who you are. Lewis again. 
got such outstanding vision. He takes one of those little crow hop steps and then explodes. Keep in mind, Jamal Lewis only had six carries in the preseason, and that was in their last game 10 days ago. I don't think he's game ready. His ankle was a little bit sore. I think what you'll see is spotted by Chester Taylor just to give him a little bit of a break, give him a chance to get himself winded, get the excitement, the energy, and settle down. Let the adrenaline settle a little. What a quinky dink. Chester's in the game. Quinky dink. He's already had six carries in this game, and Chester Taylor gained over 700 yards, filling in for Lewis when he was hurt last year. Todd Heap here's the all-pro tight end who missed all of last year with an ankle injury at basically almost 11 games. Well, this is what makes him happy, Todd yeah. Heap. Well, you know what? Ha Believe me, Kyle Bowler looks like an entirely different quarterback than we saw a year ago. We did the Indianapolis-Baltimore game a year ago, and now he's just so decisive setting with the football, getting it out. Of course, having a security blanket back like Todd Heap doesn't hurt at all. Chester Taylor is the deep man in the eye. Ravens were moving it earlier when the intercepted pass stopped the drive, and Taylor stopped by Gary Brackett. Our opener on Sunday night, just what a great matchup this is from Baltimore with the brilliant defense of the Ravens, the brilliant offense of the Colts, and the matchup of the team that used to play here against the one that does now. Well, and the one thing the Ravens really do not need to do is to move the ball like they're moving it now and come away with three. If you're going to beat the Indianapolis Colts, you've got to put some touchdowns up. Second and seven, Bowler with the out. That one is wide of Derek Mason. But I still, I still like the way he's getting back set. He knows what he wants to do with the football. And Paul, I, I agree with you. But if you're going to have to, you can't take chances just to try and get the sevens. Like uh, you know, if you wind up not getting enough yards on this one, you have to kick the field oh, goal. Oh, there's no question about but that. I'm just saying they get close. Yeah. Right. Yep. I agree with you, Paul. Thirty-one's back in the game again. The other Lewis. <laughs> and that's not good news for anybody who plays Lewis. defense. <laughs> Three man rush. Bowler dumps it off to Lewis. Fighting for yardage, not enough. Stopped at the 20. Two yards shy of a first down. Jason David and Cato June came up, come up to make the stop. <laughs> Cato June comes in and makes the stop number 59. But I'm going to tell you what, this has got to be a little frightening. Here he is, Lewis, in the open field, and he's flying. He's at full speed, and you've got to bring him down. Cato June gives up 20 pounds to him. 16-year veteran Matt Stover will come in to try a 38-yard field goal. No good. And he missed it. Well, I said so you So the Ravens have one. You're right. The Ravens have one drive stopped by an interception, another drive stopped on the missed field goal, and Paul's one for one. <laughs> After the missed field goal, the Colts take over at their own 28-yard line. Somebody's got to block Suggs. Edger and James pounds his way out for 10. What a nice job of running. It just... He is he is so versatile. He spends time with Peyton Manning. And what he does is he, he asks when Peyton's looking at things, he asks Peyton what he's looking for so that he can be on the same page as him. So as he points out different people on the defense, Edge knows exactly why he's doing that. Manning with time and tipped away, intended for Stokely Reed. Ed Got a Reed. hand on it. Ed Reed. I I, you know, I really love to watch Ed Reed play. First of all, you never know where the guy's going to be. Neither does he. And he really does it sometimes. <laughs> and he said, you know, I don't know, but I usually end up in the right spot. But look at this movement. Stokely's going inside. Reed reads it. Reads, I, he reads Stokely's eyes and then turns as the ball comes and knocks the ball away. That's perfect defense. That's why he's the best. Flag is down on second and ten. False start, 78. Offense, five-yard penalty. Second down. 
Tarek Glenn, the veteran left tackle. Reed, of course, distinguished himself as a playmaker last year and was rewarded by being named as the NFL's Defensive Player of the Year. He had 358 return yards on nine interceptions. That's right, 358. That was an NFL record. This one was 105 yards off of Jeff Garcia. <laughs> and he something? is something else. Second and 15. Look at Ray Lewis move around. <laughs> Down on one knee, up. Peter Boulware is in. Stokely makes the catch and up to the 49. Knew exactly where the sticks were. As soon as he caught it, he turned and got the first down. You know, Brandon Stokely, they said, well, he was he's not really 100%, but I think they are when it comes game time on the first game of the year. But look at this. He, he's working on the linebacker. There's Thomas, and he falls down, number 96, Thomas. When he falls down, it's open. But, but I'll tell you what, Peyton Manning had all day, Joe, to throw the football. Well, they're not bringing a lot of blitzes, and really with three wides, it wouldn't be smart. James, not this time, Ray Lewis after a gain of two. Check in with Susie. You know what, Edge's numbers speak for themselves, but the thing that really gets you is what his teammates say, the less obvious things, like work ethic. Reggie Wayne, who goes all the way back to their University of Miami days, says that Edge will just call him up to talk about what he wants to work on in practice. Peyton points to his protection. By far the best blocking back in the game. He just stones people. Susie already has 39 yards from scrimmage in this game. He is one of only five NFL players ever to go over 2,000 yards from scrimmage three times in his career, and he's only played six yards. Manning wide open. Oh. It's incomplete. A half a step too far for Harrison. How did he what? get that open? Because this is a brand-new defense, and the defensive backs have not played together, and we see them moving around all over the place. Now, that's Chris McAllister. Whoops. He, he pulls up short. He thinks he's got deep help, and all of a sudden, Peyton Manning lets one literally slip off of Marvin Harris's finger. Now, everybody will say, how can he throw the ball that badly? He's got to throw it before he's that wide open. You're going to see that from this Raven defense until they get comfortable with their communication. Well, there's a gaping hole in that defense if that happens. Somebody will be back deep on this one, I guarantee you. Blitz coming. <laughs> and they blow it dead. Joe, did you say someone was going to be deep? Well, Ed Reed Delayed. was down by the 15. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. <laughs> Ed Reed was backing up, and he was backing up. He got to the 20 when the flag went up in the air. He was on his way to the end zone to wait. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the wheels are turning on every snap on both sides of the ball. This is fascinating. You got Tom Moore, who's the offensive coordinator of the Colts, Rex Ryan, the new defensive coordinator of the Ravens. And Rex Ryan told me you can't sit in a traditional defense. Well, what we've seen from the Ravens is far from traditional when you're talking about defense. Six defensive backs are on the field for the Ravens. Five of those six have been to the Pro Bowl. Good protection for Manning. Throws underneath Edger and James. Ray Lewis drags him down. As Ray Lewis was relentless, I'm going to tell you something. And again, I'm going to repeat what he told us in the meeting two days ago. Don't ever forget about Edger and James. And this time, Edger and James was his man. And he, when Edger caught the ball, and that was the only guy that Peyton Manning could throw the ball to, Ray Lewis was right there to nail him. We talk about Peyton Manning's ability on offense to know where everybody is. Ray Lewis is the same way in the concept of this defense. He knows where he's supposed to be. Hunter Smith will kick to B.J. Sams. Fair catch lets it go, and it's down to inside the 10. Kelvin Hayden got down for the Colts. A 39-yard punt, no return. The Ravens will start from deep in their own territory. Debut for him. And the Ravens will start from deep in their own territory and only get it out to about the 10-yard line. You know, it's amazing. These two guys, now these two teams, you're talking about playing it close. They've had two drives each. 
They've had 78 yards for Indy, 73 yards for Baltimore, and they both have four first downs. Now that's close. Of course, the Indianapolis Colts added Corey Simon, number 97, uh, as an interior lineman to help him out to stop the run a little bit. And he is twice the size of anybody else out there wearing a white uniform. Forward with the out. And that's caught by Clarence Moore, the 6'6 wide receiver. Goes down to a knee to make the grab at the sideline. I talked to Ozzie Newsom, the uh, director of player personnel and vice president for the Ravens. He said that Clarence Moore is the most improved player he has seen in a one-year span since he's been in the game. And this is a kid who was a rookie last year, basically used just in the slot down around the goal line. Now he's a legitimate wide receiver, starts as their split end. They really didn't have anybody a year ago, made many catches. Moore only had 24. End of the first quarter. Yesterday, it's already gone. Tomorrow, we may never see it. But opening day is all we have. And that's today. And what a chess match it has been so far. The only problem is we're playing with live chess pieces, 200 to 300 pounds a piece who like to run into each other. I know who the Kings are. <laughs> Lewis lowers the shoulder, takes it out to 25. And Cato June. The diminutive 225 pound linebacker waiting for him. Well, if you're going to run at Corey Simon, you better put two people on him because when he walked through the door, all the light disappeared yesterday in that <laughs> room we were in. I mean, this guy is huge. It was so funny. He said he came there and he looked at all these little people. He's going to play on defense. What a nice guy. Very bright man who was uh, said it was a bittersweet to leave Baltimore or uh, rather Philadelphia to come to Indianapolis but he's looking forward to his relationship here underneath to the tight end Wilcox who drilled but he has a first down Kyle Bowler has done a real nice job of not getting himself in third and longs in manageable situations good five step drop sets fires the ball Dan Wilcox does a nice job of giving him a target to be able to throw it to what the Ravens are doing is they'll run inside and then they're spreading the field and letting their tight ends and slot receivers work the middle of the football field. Bowler lost the snap. Then hands it to Lewis and Jim Hall's got to be thinking thank you so much. <laughs> That's a smart quarterback. <laughs> yes it is. I really is. Hey, I ain't, I'm not touching this baby. If I hold it somebody's going to hit me. Look at this. Watch Kyle Bowler. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not running with it. Here. Hey, you. Take this, and you run with it. Normally, <laughs> when it bounces on the ground, the timing of a play is going to be off. That's, that's what you're thinking. This is not good for me. Let me give it to someone else. Quickly. Loss of three. Second and 13. Chester Taylor comes in. Four under pressure. Oh. And caught from behind by Larry Triplett. Boy, what a nice play by Larry Triplett, the defensive lineman. They had Freeney coming from the outside on Jonathan Ogden, and then Kyle Bowler had to step up inside, and when he did, Triplett made the play. If Triplett doesn't make the play, Kyle Bowler has a first down. Watch in the middle of the screen. You're going to see Freeney comes up, and then there's Triplett. Look at this. If he doesn't make the tackle, there's first down written all over that thing. Now this team is really vulnerable to that because they take that front four and they really tear up field after the quarterback. Bowler with time underneath. That's going to be well short of a first down. Mark Clayton makes the catch. The rookie out of Oklahoma. Now you see what the Ravens are doing. The Ravens are lining up a tight end next to Jonathan Ogden who is on the same side as Dwight Freeney. They know what happened in the last game against the Indianapolis Colts in Indianapolis, and they're not just going to let Freeney come around the corner on Ogden and be a problem. Zastadil to kick to Troy Walters. Walters racing up to make a fair catch, a dangerous diving effort, and has it at the 25. There's a marker back near midfield. Going to be a holding against the Colts. 
Well, the kick was in the air, holding 38 receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the dead ball spot. Receivers will keep the ball first down. Jerome Sapp, a defensive back, called for holding. Peyton Manning will go back to work on the road in Baltimore when we come back on Sunday Night Football. Penalty moves the Colts back to the 15-yard line, first and 10. Peyton Manning to Harrison for seven. Last time the Colts had an opportunity to make a big play. You see Ed Reed there, Chris McAllister up top, Dale Carter in the slot. Ed Reed moves up to help Chris McAllister, and Marvin Harrison just takes off down the field. Now he jumps up on the slot when he should be helping out McAllister. Missed opportunity by the Colts. Big chance to go up 7-0. That one's incomplete at the 29. Wayne was out there with Samari Roll and couldn't hold it. Would have been a first down. You know, Reggie, Wayne, we were talking to him yesterday, and he just says on every pattern, what you do is you, whether you think you're going to get the ball or not, you run it. Look at Reggie Wayne. He's in the outside. The ball was thrown back behind him. He had a dive, but he should have caught the ball. Keep it on the ground with Edger and James, and he's got the first down. I love to watch him run. So do I. You know what I, what I, Peyton was, Manning was telling us yesterday. He said, you know, when you have a guy like Edger and James, you have third and four. You don't even think about it, get, not giving him the football, because you know that he's going to pick up four yards. But I also think what I liked about him, he says he's one of the best, as Susie said, one of the best blockers he's ever seen. And they'll have a decision to make on whether they can afford to keep him. Manning throws behind Wayne, and he makes the catch in front of Samari Roll. Great pass, great pattern. You can only make those throws to receivers after you have spent time together. He is covered. Samari Roll is right on top of him. And you see where Peyton throws this football. Watch where the ball goes. It's to the outside, low outside. Now, Suggs comes around. He throws it before he ever turns around. Isn't that beautiful? Well, Jake Scott hauled Suggs down. I mean, that should have been offensive line holding. We're down to 9.52 first half. He's on a hurry up. He's calling it the line of scrimmage. Now he's moving real quick. Deion Sanders checks in. Three-man rush is what it turns out to be. Manning with time over the middle for Wayne. Wayne wanted a flag, so did Stokely. Will Demps is walking around, look with that sheepish look on his face like uh, there's no flag, is there? Well, you know, I want to explain something. Now you can hear the crowd. They're not quite as loud, okay? What they're doing is they're, they're sort of at about eight decibels versus ten. Now Manning gets a chance to call his plays. When he gets to the line of scrimmage, listen. No wonder Will Demps was looking around. See, he's already called the play. What he's doing now is telling his lineman which he can do what the protection should be. So the crowd noise hits a decibel level high now. Blitz. And Stokely paid the price. He was just hammered by Ed Reed, who got a running start and unloaded. And that was Deion Sanders, who's taken a role on this football team in his 38th year as a nickelback. He was the one that forced Peyton Manning to get the ball out of his hands. And, of course, Ed Reed just flat wants to kill Brandon Stokely. You know, in all 16 games last year that the, the uh, Indianapolis Colts would have scored by now? In all 16 games. It. And probably more than once. Hunter Smith. Pressure. Just got it out of there. May have been tipped. And it will take a Colts bounce inside the 20. That ball was Boy, the Ravens came hard. Well, Hunter Smith does that where he drops the toe down 
to try and make it a difficult ball to handle. Ed Reed, who was a consummate kick blocker, was since the time he played in high school, may have gotten a piece of this one. He did. Nothing, nothing in Baltimore. Colts and the Ravens. Ray Lewis imploring the defense to keep it up. Keep the pressure on Peyton Manning. Bowler pressured from behind, steps up and takes off. Slides to the 23. We have a holding penalty, and I think it may be on Jonathan Ogden on Freeney. Dwight Freeney, I mean, you talk about great speed from the outside. Dwight Freeney is probably the fastest guy off the line of scrimmage that you'll ever see. Watch this. Here comes Jonathan Ogden. He has a tight end on the side, and he grabs Freeney. I don't think he could grab him. He was moving too fast. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about a tackle and Jonathan Ogden, who has been a starter in the Pro Bowl eight years in a row. But just think about something. Dwight Freeney had to run around the tight end first before he even got to Jonathan Ogden. So Jonathan Ogden should have been set. See, but Jonathan, as he sets, is on his heels. And with Freeney coming with the power he does, he doesn't really get a chance to slow him down and didn't. And poor Jonathan, he has to look down at Freeney. Backs the Ravens up inside their 10. Bowler retreats, and that one is knocked away from Todd E. David Thornton knocked that one out of the grasp of the tight end. Let's go to Susie. Well, guys, Ogden has been downplaying that last meeting with Freeney last year, but a former Raven teammate told me he's quietly been obsessing about it, that he's watched a ton of film, and the big thing is to not let it take him out of his game. It's as much of a mental battle as physical because they're both so skilled, who's going to outthink who? The physical part, though, is that Freeney has that rare combination of all three skills. He's got the inside move, the outside move, and he can bull rush it. Susie, I love Dwight Freeney, but I love Ogden, too. I'll take either one of them. I'll tell you, Dwight Freeney didn't make the tackle. Dwight Freeney did doesn't make the tackle, but he's, he's a guy that created the problem on this play. Watch him go around Jonathan Ogden. Look at this speed. Jonathan Ogden's waiting for him. He doesn't know where he's going in at, so he pushes him. Now, watch him come back in. He's the guy that really slows down Jamal Lewis. And then the tackle is made. Is that any good? Yeah, but Jonathan Ogden did his job. When you run a draw, you're supposed to get the defensive end to take an outside rush, except that Feeney has such incredible ability, Freeney, to get around it and close back to make the tackle. Now third and 21, a very dangerous place for the Ravens. And Bowler is going to throw out of the end zone. Dumps it off for Taylor. Breaks a tackle, slips another one. Chester Taylor. Up to the 18-yard line, still well short of a first down. The tackle made by Raheem Brock, who pursued it from his defensive end spot. I'll tell you what I'm really impressed with tonight, and that's the Colts' defense. They came in here point. with only four linebackers on their entire roster. They've got only three defensive tackles, which Corey Simon has to be, happens to be one that they know can only play about 20 plays, and they've done the job. The key is going to be the second half because remember this is the first regular season game and a lot of these guys played very little in the preseason. I wonder what the condition of these teams will be like in the second half. 44 yard punt no return. We're still scoreless in Baltimore. Exclusively on ESPN and ESPN HD. Peyton Manning back to work. Down the middle too high for Harrison. Reed was the deep man in the middle of the field. McAllister had the coverage, and Manning will have to pick himself up. I'll tell you what. Peyton no. Manning doesn't hit the ground a whole lot. I mean, he doesn't throw a lot of interceptions, and he doesn't take unnecessary, unnecessary hits, whatever that word is. But the Ravens have been knocking him around pretty well. This is the most exciting nothing-nothing game I've ever seen. <laughs> you don't even know it's nothing-nothing. Yeah, you do. All you have to do is look at the scoreboard. Shut up. <laughs> Pressure comes. Manning hangs in there underneath the Stokely. Great move to get extra yardage, and then he's pasted out of bounds. 
Will Demps came over and threw a shoulder to finish off the tackle, but it's 17 yards for Stoke. And he beats Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders has taken the role of nickelback, and that was a terrific throw. And watch how close Deion gets to it. Here comes Stokely underneath. Deion's closing, closing. He's gonna. He's not sure whether he wants to knock it down or try and intercept it. They go on a quick count with Edger and James, Ray Lewis and Dallas Thomas, and others on the coverage. See, Suggs just took himself out of the game. I really think that the intensity level of this game and the energy that the Raven defense is exerting. They better be careful that they don't run out of steam as this game goes on. It's warm, too. It's still in the 70s and humid. Manning underneath to Harrison takes it down to about the 42. McAllister was right there but couldn't prevent the completion. You think Marvin Harrison isn't tough? I'm going to you, this guy's oh, tough. tough as nails. Yeah, he is. He, he, knew, he knew he was going to get hit by two guys and still held on to the football. He's listed at 175 pounds. I don't think he's that much, and he gets knocked around a lot, but he'll do whatever it takes. Third down for Manning. This is their best drive so far. Blitz coming. Manning down the middle, and it's incomplete intended for Ben Utech, the tight end out of Minnesota. He's in there because Dallas Clark is still suffering from a concussion. Well, the pressure is going to come to Manning right up the middle, and he and he was he was questioning yesterday when he told us in the meeting, Joe, about his tight end. He says they're young, and I'm not sure that they know where they're going. Well, there's the unspoken words that he had with Marcus Pollard and Dallas Clark. Now he has to take the time to explain things. Doesn't look like he has a whole lot of time, does it? Fair catch made by B.J. Sams, a 28-yard punt, but the ball's down inside the 15-yard line. Peyton Manning not used to being this deep into a game with no points. A year ago, when Peyton Manning faced the Ravens, he threw for 249 yards and one touchdown. The one touchdown represents the low watermark from last year. He averaged against the rest of the league last year, 287 and three scores a game. <laughs> Lewis with you at halftime for an amazing day in pro football guys okay? thank you Boomer and Dwight <laughs> Freeney just said how do you do I mean you come on it's it's like not covering Edger and James you got to put a hat on this guy watch this folks everybody watch oh. down Jamal Lewis got the ball and got killed. It happened in the last game, too, and everybody said, well, you know why? Because he's on turf. That, he, he's that quick because he's on turf. No, he's not. He's that quick all the time. It has nothing to do with the oh, surface. You'd have man. to put him on butter to slow him down. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> and it looked like Ogden may have moved early. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Yes, sir. I'd move. I would say, you know, ref, ball start, 75, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. I would say, ref, can I have an extra step? Because this guy's really faster than anyone I've ever seen before, you know, and he really is. Let me tell you, this is where a quarterback can help out, though. This is where an experienced quarterback says, you want him to take him on? No, go hard counts. Go, go long counts. Do something to disrupt the timing that Dwight Freeney has now figured out in Kyle Bowler's cadence. Now he's got to do something different. Not on this play, but in the sequences that are coming up. Bowler drops into the end zone to throw. Comes out short. And once again, very conservative and safe. Mark Clayton makes the catch, but they'll have to punt it away again. Well, we talked about Dwight Freeney, so now let us show you. Dwight Freeney has got such great speed. He goes around Jonathan Ogden, and he helps out on Jamal Lewis. And he goes around, nobody blocks him, and he comes down the line of scrimmage and hits Jamal Lewis. Now watch this one. This is the one I don't even understand. You've got to at least, I mean, I'd reach out and hold him if I had to. Walters makes the fair catch. The Colts, five, six yards at a time, are increasing their field position. They're out to the 44. Manning with the pump fake. Stokely 
inside the 30. Joe, he was open. Very <laughs> open. And, and Deion Sanders is the guy that's supposed to be on the slot and cover. What happens is Peyton Manning does a terrific job of dropping back, pumping to the right, and we know that the Raven defense likes to read and react to everything he does. He just moves him over there, comes back in the middle. Four catches for Stokely, one of three receivers with over 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns last year. It had never happened before in the NFL. Stokely in the slot on the left this time. Harrison got drilled again by Demps, but makes the catch. That's two catches for, or that's down to the two-minute warning here. In a nothing-nothing game, the Colts are driving in Ravens territory. The Colts have not been held scoreless in the first half of any game last year. You have to go back to the final game of the 2003 season, the playoff game against New England. Right now, this is their best field position. They've reached the Ravens' 22-yard line with two minutes to go in a scoreless first half. Now, he hasn't gone to Edwin James in a long time. You're right. So don't forget about him. Manning underneath to Stokely. That'll be enough for a first down. They'll reach the 17-yard line. The fifth catch for Stokely. Deion Sanders made the stop. And this is the area where Peyton Manning said at the end of the year, teams started playing them differently. They have to be able to run the football in the red zone if they're going to be a more efficient scoring team in the red zone. We asked Deion about playing the slot. It's totally different. He said, man, this is tough. Looked like Suggs jumped early. Free play. Demps picks it off in the end zone. But now we check the penalty. Doesn't matter. Suggs was offside. Peyton Manning knew he had a free one. He just tried to force it in. Offside. Defense. 55. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Darrell Suggs, number 55, is trying to get the jump, and, and he just gets a look at this. And, I, you know, I, Peyton Manning could see him coming, so he already knows that he's got a free play. You see, all this noise, it, it affects the defense. The defensive guys are guessing a little bit as well. They can't hear a snap count. They can't pick up a rhythm from a quarterback. They have to go off a of movement. Still first down, five to go. Colts have two timeouts, a minute 26 to go. They have to reach the seven for another first down. Manning under pressure. Stokely is thrown back, reached the nine. They'll give him his forward progress to about the nine and a half. Michael, he had Edgerin James wide open and nobody covered him. Edgerin James went out to his left and not a soul went out with him. Clock is running, but the Colts still have plenty of time. Reggie Wayne up top in your screen was just bouncing around. James. First down inside the five. It will be first and goal for Indianapolis. And this is what Peyton Manning was talking about. The, they've got to get more Edwin James down around the red zone. He scored eight of the Colts' 42 red zone touchdowns last season. They were number one as a team getting in, but only six scoring touchdowns. They're offside again. Did Suggs move first, or was he drawn? Well, the flag was thrown way out here on the, on, on the right-hand side, so it has to be Suggs because there's no way that this official could see any movement in the line. See, they've come back with two successive runs, and, and this is what's going to make Indianapolis even more dangerous offensively. If Peyton Manning commits to running the football down here, which he said he wants to. They have more yardage if they don't take half Offside, the distance. Offside, defense. Half the distance to the goal, number 55. Replay first down. So well, again. Suggs again. Yeah, he's just he's just guessing. You know, I mean, he's trying to make something happen, and you don't have to with this defense. Just play the defense. You've got enough stars on this thing. See, the center, Jeff Saturday, can play games with him. He can lift his head up once. He can lift his head up a couple of times. I give him an awful lot of credit for running this offense 
over the ball with this much noise going on. One of the best centers in the league and a very smart guy. First and goal from the two. Manning throws it away. And Utech, the tight end, looks like he was hurt. Dallas Clark is not able to play because of a concussion. Marcus Pollard, the other long-term tight end, left as a free agent. But Utech is running across the end zone, and Ned Reed is there. And you saw the collision, and you're saying, well, why isn't there a flag? Because Ed Reed had position, and so did Utech. He's going for the ball. There was no foul. Last year, Ed Reed's hurt. Last year, every one of his wide receivers had double-digit touchdown receptions. The tight ends managed to get 11, so that position had double digits as well. Twenty-six seconds to go in the first half. Ed Reed looks like he's going to be all right. So does Utech. Look at Utech. They just collide. They're both going for the ball. Ed Reed has got position. There's no foul here. But Ed Reed was looking. They took a timeout. And the reason that he can stay in the game is because they took the timeout. Thank you very much. Second and goal. James. No. Clock running. They'll stop it at 20. It's interesting. The Baltimore Ravens are built to run the football. The Indianapolis Colts offensive line I'm talking about is really built to pass block. We get two very different styles of offense. Coming up at the half, we'll join Chris Berman for the Kia Halftime Show. He'll have the fastest three minutes in football. New Orleans, what an emotional win for the Saints today. And highlights of the U.S. Open men's final all coming up on the Kia Halftime Show. And this is one of the best 30 minutes I've watched it with no score. Talking about it looks marvelous. Talking about the New Orleans Saints, a lot of people pick the Carolina Panthers at home to be able to, to be in a Super Bowl. They expect them to be a very good football team. And New Orleans goes into Carolina with everything that they've done down there. Jim Haslett deserves so much credit. Sure and does. every one of those players do as well. To be able to focus, it was remarkable. Third and goal. Colts have one timeout left. Got to go play action. I think he has to go play action. Cow. That's the second ball that the defensive backs have had a chance to, to get. Now, McAllister looks like he may have hurt himself as well. He jammed the finger earlier. Now, he tries to catch this. It goes right through his hands. Now, right here, he comes up a little bit lame as he heads towards the sidelines. Actually, where he touched that ball, he'd have gone 101. And McAllister is the guy who set the NFL record with a 107-yard return of a missed field goal. Of course, Ed Reed had one, what, 104 last yeah. year, I believe? And now they bring on Vanderjet, and he will try the field goal. The Ravens take a timeout with 20. It will be a 20-yard attempt by Vanderjet. Wow. Chris McAllister has got to be absolutely sick. And Ray Lewis continues to preach to his defense. And Peyton Manning is close to being sick. I tell you, you want to talk about taking a sigh of relief <laughs> because all he could see was seven the other way. I mean, well, if he had well the, they only had the one wide receiver out, and he didn't get the football first. Wow. You just these defensive backs don't drop many footballs. No, they don't. When I watch, I've been watching practice for the last month. It seems like of the Ravens because I did a game, but you know he breaks on it perfectly. It's not like he gets his head around late. He's got his head around. He's right there. It's almost like Peyton is throwing it to him. It goes right through his hands. The Ravens have missed the field goal. Now it's Vander Jet's turn. And he does not miss. And the Colts take a 3-0 lead with 15 seconds to go in the half. And that's really a victory for that Ravens defense holding Indianapolis to a field goal. 
really been some key plays in a game that's 3 nothing. You wouldn't think so. Stover, the veteran, misses a field goal just outside the upright. And Billick knows he's not going to get too many opportunities. Then Marvin Harrison on a blown coverage overthrown by a half a step. That would have been an easy touchdown. And then McAllister drops a sure interception that he would have returned 100, 101 yards to put the Ravens on top. But right now it stands 3-0 Colts. I still think think what becomes a factor in this game and probably for the Raven defense is the intensity with which they had played in the first half. What about the conditioning factor? These guys have not played 60 minutes of football. You, in the third preseason game, you play about a half. So they're right about it where their bodies have been. Now it's just a question of how far, how hard did you train in the offseason to carry you through this particular was first game. Was it tough for you in the first game of the regular season? I was a little guy. I know not no, not really, but I know our defensive front had a problem with it. Our big guys up front got a little gassed. Paul, did you have a problem in the first game of the year? Of course, you guys played a lot of a lot of preseason games. Six. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Well, you, yeah, but we got in shape in camp. Justin Green on the return of the squib. I used to win about 225 and get down to 224. <laughs> now, if you're the Ravens, what do you do? You have 11 seconds. At least two plays you have if you want to take shots. I think if you throw a 12-yard completion, somebody gets out of bounds, you still have a chance. But I'll tell you one thing. You, you made a statement that this Ravens offensive line, they're built to run the football. I agree with you 100%. They are. But I'll tell you, when this kid goes back to pass, I mean, he's looking at white shirts flying all uh, around well, Kyle Bowler. He's looking at one white shirt. Well, yeah, but those <laughs> number nine. But he's making it he possible flying. He's making it possible for everybody else to get there. That they was added five, five yards to this return because the Colts were offside. A new yeah. rule this year: they just tack it on. Bowler out of the shotgun, four-man rush, deep over the middle. Cow. What a throw by Kyle Bowler, and that definitely would have put him in field goal range. He would have been able to get out of bounds, would have been able to stop wow. the clock, and uh, it would have been a 48-yarder. No question. Matt Stover, well within his range. He's 9 out of 10 between 40 and 49 yards. And boy, what a good throw. Now you almost have to try and make the same kind of a throw and get the same amount. Well, of listen, distance. they're going three wide with, with Peep on this side all alone. Now they got a penalty. Movement. That helps. <laughs> the defense, not the offense. False start. 84. Offense. Five yard penalty. You know, this second down. This is one of those penalties that really absolutely drive you crazy. You got three wide receivers to one side. You're gonna throw the ball deep. Everybody's going deep. What are you doing moving? I mean, you're not going anywhere, it's a good Jack. Question. Let me let me say this about Clarence Moore. I've watched through the course of this football game. He is not very comfortable catching the football. He's trying to cradle him. He's trying to make it too perfect to catch. And I'm afraid he's going to start fighting himself when he tries to catch the ball, especially after the last drop. Only five seconds left. Bowler deep over the middle. Little hook and ladder play. They got a score because time went out. Time runs out. The ball's still alive. And now we're done. <laughs> the Ravens do everything they can, but time expires on the last play. What a first half. A tremendous defense against a tremendous offense. And we end up with a 3 nothing score. The Colts on top of the Ravens. A battle of wills here in Baltimore. The score here at M&T Bank Stadium. 3 nothing Colts. We told you at the start of the game, the emotion would be tremendous for opening night in Baltimore. Ray Lewis and company against Peyton Manning, the most dangerous offense in the league, against arguably the most wicked defense. And it's been that kind of a half. Only 3 nothing after two quarters of play here in Baltimore. Sellout crowd of more than 70,000. The Colts will get the ball to start the second half. Carthon. 
taking out of bounds shy of the 20. We said it was going to be a matchup between Ray Lewis and Peyton Manning. Certainly, there are far more people involved than that. I mean, everybody has played so solidly in this game. But that's what it comes down to, the two superstars. Well, when you look at the defense, they have done for the Baltimore Ravens everything that they had to do, except one thing, Joseph. They haven't scored. And if they score, they may be able to win the ball game. I'm talking about the defense. If they score, they can win. And I think Peyton Manning has had opportunities to make plays. He missed Marvin Harrison with one. He also got a gift back from Chris McAllister when he had a chance to go 100-plus at the end of the half. So Peyton has been very patient, and I think he has to stay that way and count on his defense to play the way they have been playing. And that's the other thing that's happened tonight. The Colts' defense has been... Terrific, as Paul pointed out earlier. Edger and James with the rush, brought down by Kelly Gregg. Let's go to Susie. Mike, I talked to, Doni, to Tony Dungy. He said all that movement from the Ravens' defense, of course they expected it. What they need to do are more quick counts at the line. Just get up, call a play. And, of course, Brian Billick thrilled with his defense. They've got to be thrilled with it every week, especially now that they're back in the 4-3 which seems to be perfect for them. And that's the second time a pass has gone by Ben Utek, the tight end, that he didn't get his head around in time to even see it. And that's just a product of not working with Peyton Manning. We talked about it in the first half. He had such a comfort level with Marcus Pollard, who is now in Detroit. And then you take it with Dallas Clark. He's another one he felt good about who's on the sidelines. They expect Dallas Clark to play next week. He had a concussion, and it's a safety precaution because he's not playing. And what a tremendous weapon he is. Look at this defense. They got two down, two down guys, and everybody. No, one down guy. No. Now they two shifting down guys. everywhere. Blitz coming from the right. Manning running away from pressure and does the smart thing, throws it away. Peter Bowler was going to try the free agent market. Didn't play all last year, had various types of injuries. Finally came back to the Ravens and said, look, okay, I thought I'd be a 60-play guy. You think I'm going to be a 20-play pass rusher? I agree with you. I'd like to come back here and play. Interestingly enough, they didn't give anybody the number 58 when they came to camp. It was still Peters to have. And he is the all-time sack leader for this franchise, 67 and a half. Sams from the 38. Got a wall set up on the near side, can't get there. And the Colts cover it better. Back near midfield, however, a 12-yard return after a 44-yard punt. Jamal Lewis and company will go back to work when we return to Baltimore. Baltimore commemorated its role in the War of 1812 in front of Fort McHenry. The facility and its soldiers were the inspiration for the writing of our national anthem by Francis Scott Key. Great field position for the Ravens. They started their own 49. Jamal Lewis has gained only 35 yards rushing tonight. The Colts defense done a great job against the run. This is a completion of the tight end Dan Wilcox who can be used as a wide receiver. I think that this drive is critical for the Baltimore Ravens. Great field position. They've missed an opportunity on a field goal earlier. You can't continue to get this kind of field position against the Colts and come away with no points. Because percentages say that Peyton Manning's going to get a touchdown at some point in time. Even though he hasn't yet, you just can't waste so much on your defense. But what an improvement for Indianapolis. They were 29th in the league a year ago. Bowler straight down the middle. Jump ball, no good. Good coverage by Jason David, who's starting a corner tonight. I like the Clarence ball. Moore was the intended receiver. Yeah, you talk about great coverage. Jason David played this thing absolutely perfectly, and he just waited and waited and waited. He was in front of Clarence Moore, and he slowed down. Look at this. Look at him playing the ball. And he just slowed down. Now Clarence Moore has no chance to get the ball. See, and I think Clarence Moore, as he develops, will do a better job of learning how to position his body Cal Bowler will put the ball in a position where he can use his height. That's 5-8 against 6-6. Six, six. Just throw it up short. Let him go get it. Here they come. Maybe. 
Bowler out in the flat. They've got a first down. Good catch by the rookie Mark Clayton out of Oklahoma. Their first round draft choice, who was very good after the catch. Something the Ravens couldn't do was a darn last year. But well, yeah, I tell you, they talk about this guy about great hands and then run after the catch. Look at this. And what you have to do here, watch this. Here's a double team on Freeney. They, they, Jonathan Ogden is getting help from the fullback, which he needs. Yeah, Jonathan doesn't care. He doesn't have an ego that says, I want to block the guy one-on-one. -on -one. Block him somehow. Fake to Lewis. Pressure up the middle. Bowler throws. Oh. Way too high for Derek Mason. This offense really didn't resemble any kind of big play offense. Last year, uh, Kevin Johnson had 35 catches. Travis Taylor had 34. And Chester Taylor had... 30. They had absolutely no ability to catch the ball and do anything with it after they got it. As a matter of fact, Derek Mason's 96 catches totaled the three guys that were on the top list for the Ravens. Well, they were 31st passing, 31st overall. This is a running team. Bowler, short set. You know, and it's, out of bounds in front of Harper is Derek Mason. You know what's amazing is that they talk about, well, Todd Heap wasn't here last year. Right. Well, he's caught one pass tonight. They've only thrown the ball to him, I think, one time. But his presence, Paul, I think makes a difference. De defenses now have to play the tight end position. Last year, they really didn't. And, and also, remember, Jamal Lewis missed, you know, five games, almost five full games as well. So... You know, they've got weapons that defenses have to be responsible for. Big play here, third and five. Receivers bunched to the right side. Bowler back to throw again over the middle. That's going to be short of a first down. Mason made the catch, but the Colts defense got there quickly. Kick it. It'll be fourth and a yard. Kick it. you got to kick it. Got to kick it. I mean, it's a very makeable field goal. That would tie the ball game, and here comes Matt Stover. Now well, you have to because of one thing above anything else. If he would, if they would go for it and miss against this Colt team, that would fire that team up more than they need sure. to be fired up. Not only that, you're missing a chance to put points on the board. I mean, you've got to get them. Stover has missed once from 38. This will be from 47. No and then it hooks wide left. Same exact spot he missed the last one at. So the reliable 16-year veteran has missed twice. It's still 3-0. Colts after the mid missed field goal will start from their own 37. The Ravens defense has been tough, but they haven't forced the issue. And Edger and James battles for a couple until Anthony Weaver makes the tackle. You have to look for these. A negative graphic on Peyton Manning. Six points in the last seven quarters. No touchdowns in 68 passes. That goes all the way back to the playoff loss to the Patriots. Mark that carefully. You're not going to see many of those. Pointing directly at Ray Lewis. Lewis looks around, signals to Ed Reed, who drops back. Oh, he's got time. Manning, Stokely can't come up with it. Well, Davis Thomas is an incredibly versatile part of this defense. He had eight sacks a year ago, four forced fumbles. Now he goes back into pass coverage, and he almost gets a shot at breaking up a play. I mean, he's back 10 yards in the pass cover. He's 270. How athletic is that? Well, that's the versatility of this defense. They've got ends that have been linebackers in college or have that kind of ability. And look, hey. nobody on the Raven defense is in a two or three point stance until Manning gets set. Peyton has missed his last four. He calls timeout. One defensive lineman. They're doing everything they can to play with that offense.
Never have 71,000 people enjoyed a 3-0 game more than they have tonight in Baltimore. This has been spectacular. Well, they have enjoyed a little more if they had the three. They would. It's a big third down and long for Peyton Manning. Now you've got 10 guys, 11 guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage, and only one or two are backing out. And they end up rushing four. Manning steps up. Edger and James oh. tried to short arm it to get it. There is a flag down in the secondary. And if this is against the defense, this is a first down. It would be 30 yards away from the play. Exactly. And it would be defensive holding or contact. That's, I'll tell you one thing. This is the Illegal first Illegal use of the hands. Hands to the face. 24. Defense while the quarterback was in the pocket. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That's Dale Carter, the four-time pro bowler. Instead of getting the ball back on a punt, they give him an automatic first down. There it is. You oh, see yeah. it? Yes. There's no question about it. John Stokely, he puts his hands in his face. And you cannot do that. But I'll tell you one thing. You very rarely ever see Edwin James short arm the ball. But yeah. I'll tell you, he saw Ray Lewis coming. Yeah. Well, he was trying to make a move, too. He wanted to catch that ball and turn inside. Can the Colts take advantage of that break? They bring five. Wayne, nice decision just to lower his head and get what he could. He's within a half a yard of the sticks and into Ravens territory. What you're seeing out of Peyton Manning is something he really tried to do a year ago. Be a much more patient quarterback. Take the underneath receivers if they're there. Don't try and force the big play. That's what he's done tonight against this Raven defense. Edger and James has the first down. Tough run down to the 42. Peyton Manning has to be more prepared than any other player of any position than I can ever remember. See, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. I, I think every quarterback in this league has to prepare. I think a Tom Brady, for example, has to do that, Mike. I, I understand what you're saying, but there, you know, Peyton is very dramatic around the line of scrimmage. That doesn't mean that other guys don't prepare. No, no, I didn't say that. Oh, okay. Tell me then, please. He said he is the most prepared guy I have ever been around. I agree. Stokely. Boy, does he have great hands, Stokely. Did you watch him just look the ball in and snatch it with his hands, turn up the field? I mean, first of all, Peyton Manning escapes, and then watch Stokely. Carter's on him. He just watched it. He has, look at his hands. His hands, I mean, just as soft as you could possibly be. Keep in mind, he has not played football. Done, Seven catches, 83 yards. Reed came in to hit the running back almost before he got the ball. This is Brandon Stokely's first game since Tokyo. Got hurt in the first pack practice six weeks ago. Watch Edger and James. You want to see some balance? Ed Reed's coming in on the left. He is almost knocked off his feet. Gets back up and picks up three yards on that play. That's incredible. Manning, Dean, Harrison, touchdown! Oh, what a throw! There was the pump and go. Yeah, it was. I mean, he'd been setting it up all he, night. He set up that. He set up that one pass play through the entire first half of the football game. He'd continue to throw little short posts. He'd throw little hooks. He kept throwing them and throwing them and throwing them. That's when he had the opportunity he wanted. There's the pump, and what a terrific throw! Now Chris McAllister thinks he has a shot at this, and just mistimes his jump. And Marvin Harrison doesn't. You ever see a place go quiet? 72,000 people shut up. There are only so many times you can stop that guy from burning you to death. Well, the thing about it is Christmas, Chris McAllister through this entire ball game, Joe, up until this, this point in time, had a, has had a great game against Marvin Harrison. He has covered him all over the field. That was the 83rd time they have hooked up for a touchdown in their career. The first touchdown of the ball game that puts the Colts on top of the Ravens 10 0 here in Baltimore. And Marvin's sister, like, yeah, so what? 
<laughs> well, this is the. This They've is, done it before. Yeah, we've done it before. And this so is what? the kind of a football game where patience just pays off. B.J. Sam's deep to return from the eight. Across the 25 and out of bounds. Peyton Manning has been setting this play up. That's Marvin Harrison, and against him is Chris McAllister. With pass track, you're going to get a chance to see how Peyton Manning just cuts this ball loose long before Marvin Harrison ever gets behind Chris McAllister. And you look at the distance, 44 yards, a perfect rainbow. Led the receiver, let the ball go out of his hands at the 22-yard mark, so the ball wound up traveling that distance to get to Marvin Harrison. Now the Ravens down by 10, and the sense of urgency for their offense is going to start to come into play, even though there's an eternity left in this game. Boomer, just what a story that Agassi was in the final. I mean, remarkable. Baller back to throw. Over the middle, too high. Clarence Moore got a hand on it, couldn't hold it. And good coverage by Bob Sanders, the diminutive free safety. He's only 5'8 as well. See, I think this offense has the capability of playing catch-up. I don't believe a 10-point lead is out of the question for Kyle Bowler. What he's got to get is some help from his receivers. They're going to have to make catches. Guys are going to have to make plays and can't give up opportunities to be able to catch the football, whether you're on the defensive side of the ball or the offensive side. Actually been uh, quite accurate tonight, 14 out of 22, only 130 yards, and has the one pick. Oh, Jonathan. Jonathan hopped back. I mean, that was beautiful. Ball start, 75 offense, five-yard penalty, third down. That's right. That was me. That, I... When you're on the end of the line and you hop before anybody else hops or skips, they see you. Here it comes. Jonathan, watch this. Bink. <laughs> you know, Freeney was talking about him. He said, you know what I watch? I watch his knee. When he sees his knee move, he knows he's moving. Doesn't matter how much noise there is out there. I can move when I can move. Bowler, pressure up the middle, throws underneath the Heat. And Heat wrapped up as he got to the 32. Cato June with another big hit. And once again, the Ravens passing game comes up short. They're settling for the little stuff and not getting downfield for first down. But this is the third time that Kyle Bowler has had third and 12 plus. And let's face it, the Indianapolis Colts aren't stupid. They're going to give you a certain amount of yards. They'll let you throw the underneath play, and then they'll come up and tackle you. And that's exactly what they've done. But this is a defense that was 29th last year. Not anymore. Yeah, well, where was the Ravens' offense? 31st. Same thing. Yeah. Walters nailed as he got back to the 29. B.J. Ward down on special teams for the Ravens. Nothing on the return after a punt of 38. 10 nothing Colts. Join NFL Hurricane Relief and get what you can next Monday starting at 7.30 Eastern. That one is complete to Harrison who was drilled by Ray Lewis. Hangs on. Let's check in with Susan. Mike, they are the most dominant duo in the game today. Marvin Harrison and Peyton Manning are now just two touchdowns shy of tying one of the most prestigious marks in the sport combined touchdowns. Young and Rice have 85. These two are both technicians. They spent hourless time running every play in the playbook. At this point, they're almost telepathic. It's been marvelous to watch them. And the fact that he is not the only weapon for Peyton Manning is what makes them great. Manning throws again. Wayne down to the 42, and there's a flag down. All right, Chris McAllister on Marvin Harrison in the first half. I mean, he did an excellent job. Look at Chris McAllister. He bumps him there. Good play. Chris McAllister again. Watch it. Almost had a 101-yard interception for a touchdown. But in one play... Christmas Cal Chris McAllister doesn't do his job and it's a touchdown. I think his legs I think his legs are getting weird. I mean he just had no jump in his legs. You know let me tell you something on that last drive where the Colts scored they had 63 yards in the drive 
But five yards was that face mask on third down that caused that whole thing. That's right. And the Ravens have blitzed 15 times so far in this ball game, Joe, and they haven't even gotten close to Peyton Manning. Well, that's a tribute to that offensive line and a tribute to Manning's quick release, as well as the blocking of Edger and James, and that's one of the great qualities he possesses as a back. James picks his way and then accelerates. 30 down to the 26. Ray Lewis finally makes the tackle, but it's a gain of 16 for the two time rushing champ. I have to say this once again a game. Watch his feet. Look at this guy. I'm going to tell you something. He just breaks the tackle, Terrell Suggs, number 55, and then he moves upfield. That's Ray Lewis that makes the tackle. But I'll tell you, Edger and James gains all of his yardage inside the tackle. That's tough running. And it seems like after contact. It took him two years to come back from that torn ACL. But he looks like a rookie all over again. Manning steps up, throws, touchdown! It's the tight end, Ben Utek. And Manning has found a rhythm. Well, I'll tell you what. Here they come again. And what all Peyton Manning did was just step up. He took those two steps forward. Watch this. They're coming after him. He just bang, bang, and then throw. And look at Utek, wide open. But look at the job the offensive line does for him. Gives him a chance to look out, do a few, little bit of pumping, move the defensive secondary where he wants them, and then make the throws. Now, aren't you glad we showed you the negative Peyton Manning frustration graphic? I think no touchdown him. passes in the last 68, because you may never see it again. I think you upset him. I think you might have seen that. Peyton Manning has hit two touchdown passes in his last seven throws. 102 yards in the second half to go with 141 in the first. You can hold them down, but you can't hold them out of the end zone forever. Peyton Manning, in addition to being the kind of person, the kind of football player you'd want to have on your team and be around, I think people are just becoming aware of what he and his brother Eli did for the victims of the flood in New Orleans. Just so much energy needed in New Orleans to bring to those people what they had to have and Manning and his brother loaded up 31,000 pounds of non perishable items and took them to Baton Rouge as part of the relief mission to Manning's home state. They also helped deliver items to the American Red Cross to assist citizens who had been displaced by Hurricane Katrina. Now keep in mind, they got the plane, they got the perishable goods. This wasn't like somebody gave them to them That's and right. they made the flight exactly. down. This was done by the Mannings as a family. Of course, Archie and Cooper are down there and, and their family. You know, it's, you know what's amazing about the drive with UTech? He's missed them three times. I mean, the guy was, he was thrown to three times. He doesn't go away from people. He's gonna find you. Just all you gotta do is get open. 17 nothing and the night just got a whole lot tougher for the Ravens offense now they're down by three scores and you can pretty much forget pounding away with Jamal Lewis and the first half for Peyton Manning was not as productive obviously as the second half has been steps up makes the throw misses Marvin Harrison who is 30 yards past the Ravens secondary then at the end of the half almost allows Chris McAllister to go a long way now the second half becomes a whole different ball game quick pump fake put it up for Marvin Marvin Harrison on top of Chris McAllister but he's not done steps up it's been UTEC right in the middle of the field a lot of his passes have been down the middle of the football field keep in mind that Ravens defense has been out on that field longer and longer Bowler trying to get out of trouble. And Bowler's Larry hurt. Triplett got him from behind. Bowler is hurt. Boy, and I'll tell you what. Yeah, he is oh. hurt. And it's an ankle. That could be, but, could be a, uh, a leg. Gosh. I'm telling you something. This entire four guys on this defensive line, they just come. Look at look at who's in, in his face. There are all of the defensive linemen are there. And Triplett gets him here and then comes down on his leg. Well, you're, you're now asking the Baltimore Raven offensive line to do something they don't do very well, and that's pass block, against a defense that is built to go after passers. 
I mean, when you can only hope that Kyle Bowler is all right when we talked to him the other day. He's the kind of a kid you want to succeed. He's a nice young man. He has struggled and now he might be hurt and that's Anthony Wright warming up. 17 nothing the Colts now on top of the Ravens and here is how Kyle Bowler was hurt on that last sequence. Well here he is coming off the field. They already have the shoe off being assisted off by the training staff. I'll tell you here comes Larry Triplett number 75 and you take a look at I me. Mean, he just dives at his legs and he catches his right leg and Bowler knows right away. Look at the pressure by this defensive line. Kyle Bowler is just trying to get out of there and he has no place to go. I uh, just feel terrible for him. They're playing pretty darn well tonight. We'll get a report on him as soon as we can. So now Anthony Wright comes in on second and 20 down 17 to nothing and immediately throws a strike to Todd Heath. This is a guy who has a big arm who is knocked around. This is his third team in the NFL but we've seen him several times. He's played well every time we've covered him. Last year he had a shoulder problem didn't play at all came back year before led the Ravens into the playoffs did pretty well certainly has the ability to be able to throw the football which is what this Raven offense is going to need right now. Started with Pittsburgh then went to Dallas started in Dallas. Right throws again and this is Derek Mason and Wright has been a favorite of these Baltimore fans whenever he's gotten an opportunity. How about Mason you think Mason isn't smart enough to know where the first down marker was he just got to it. He went to, Mason goes to the first down marker and Wright hits him right there watch this on the left hand side of your screen. Anthony Wright puts the ball perfectly Mason is just beyond the line of scrimmage. Of course in most cities the backup quarterback is the favorite guy in town. Unless you're in Indianapolis or Green Bay. Right again. And he is certainly a far more experienced quarterback to run this kind of offense. Well, he really is. He's just a more experienced quarterback, period, than Kyle Bowler. Kyle Bowler has been working and working and working on his game. Now, the thing about Anthony Wright is he has had quite a bit of work in training camp. So it's not like he's taken over late in a year and been sitting down and hasn't had a lot of work. And from the looks of what happened to Kyle Bowler, he's going to be their quarterback for a while with Derek Anderson, their sixth round pick, as a backup. Lewis. I can't tell you how impressed we have been by this defense. Cato Jones made some huge plays, number 59, bracket number 58 has been in there Thornton has had a pretty good game and that defensive line well everybody I mean they have all really played well well we sit down with Tony Dungy yesterday and he walks in the door and he said okay would you give us the guys that aren't going to dress and the first five six guys he gave us were all defensive guys and they only they only sit down seven they only had four linebackers coming into this game because of injuries and then you had Corey Simon who was just signed and Simon is going to be limited in the number of plays he can play. He's got to help him. A former pro bowler who was a stalwart against the run also rushes the passer very well. And there he is. Corey's going to have to play himself in the state. But boy, he can still move even as big as he is right Look now. Look at the thighs. Well, he says he loves to rush the passer. You know, you know, if he put thigh pads on, you wouldn't be able to see him. They look like <laughs> little band-aids. I mean, he he's has, a nice man. His, oh. oh, he's a great and smart guy. Felt they didn't come, didn't want to come to Baltimore originally because he just wanted to stay in Philadelphia. And the Ravens finally get a big play. Chester what? Taylor for 24. What they did. Now you, you said this in the beginning of the game, Joe. This is a run offensive line. This is what they do. And what they did right here with Chester Taylor is go straight up the middle. Look at the quicks right here. Boom. They get a great block by the center, and right in the middle of the field, he's gone. But now you see, I mean, this offensive line can pass block. Don't get me wrong. But if they have to just line up and take guys on with their ears back, they really are struggling. They'll struggle with it. Right. Dumps it to Taylor. And Taylor tackled by four Colts, but not before he gets inside the 30. And these fans are back on their feet. 
Anthony Wright has done an excellent job managing this game, not forcing it down the field. As he's gone in, he's basically taken what the defense gives him. And the other thing I like about him, he gets him in and out of the huddle in a hurry. There's very little wasted time. He'll snap the ball with 15 seconds to go. He hasn't missed. He's coming in for the injured Kyle Bowler. Four for four, 35 yards. And every pass has been on the money. Oh, this one is knocked away. Nice defense by Nick Harper, who saw that one coming. Colts defense has held opponents scoreless through three quarters once in seven years. Once. <laughs> and they only have 13 seconds left to go in this third quarter to match that. That was the year the Texans came into uh, being, didn't That's, it? I believe so. <laughs> well, you Certainly they have not hung their hat on defense. No. Nope. This is really a big play for this team because what they, I mean, they don't need a field goal. They have to go for it. I mean, they're, they're in four down territory. Blitz coming. Wright hangs in there and throws wide. Well, he throws wide because Dan Wilcox, Dan Wilcox fell, down. fell down. Or actually tripped up. That'll do it. Now you're in a position, you got fourth down in about a, almost four. Ah, you got to have to go for it. Brian, Brian, Brian Billick has no choice but to go for it here. Well, you can't bring on your field goal kicker who's already missed two. No, and you and really you're down 17 points with basically a quarter of football exactly. to go. So I think you have to find Todd Heap here. Trying to keep the drive alive. Right over the middle, and they got the first down to the 21-yard line. Derek Mason, who's having a big opening game as the new receiver for the Ravens. That's the end of the third quarter. The Colts continue to lead, but the Ravens are driving. Back in Baltimore, where the Ravens are driving, they are down 17-0 as we start the fourth quarter. Anthony Wright is in and relief for the injured Kyle Bowler. You know, the one thing about it, when you go for it, uh, you know, in, on, what, the 30-yard line or wherever it is, and you go for it on, on fourth down, field goal is totally out of your picture now it's not even in your game plan you've got now there's no decision ever going to be made except for a touchdown right oh. Mahaley on the little <laughs> check down and he's blasted by Harper let's go to Susan Mike, the battle of AFC heavyweights was a draw till round three. Then Peyton Manning took off 20 of 33, 243 yards. Hooks up with his young wide receiver, Ben Utek. And then the dynamic duo, Manning to Harrison for the 83rd time. Matt Stover had his chances 0 for 2 on the night. Nothing but frustration for Brian Billick as the Colts dominate. Susie, his team has still been shut out. And wasn't it interesting talking to Peyton Manning yesterday where he says, you may have to be 15-1 and one like the Steelers were a year ago to get home field advantage. And that's what he wants. And the Ravens family for the Hurricane Katrina relief effort, including the owner Steve Bishotti, have donated $1,215,000. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thanks, Steve. Special guy in a special organization. And the, league, the league as a whole has donated over 10 million. That's players, That's owners, teams, and everybody else. So many guys have stepped up and asked other people to do the same thing, and you've got to be so proud of the overall effort these people have made, many of whom are, are from either Louisiana or somewhere else on the Gulf Coast and have just been so staggered by this. And now Anthony Wright's got to step up and get this offense in the end zone in a hurry. Third and five. Oh, look out. 
from behind, and he's that triplet has had a heck of a ball game. Well, it's his second sack, and he got a free run. Well, when you pay a whole lot of attention to Dwight Free, number 93, number 75 has hasn't slowed down all night. Look in the left hand side of the screen here. He is the defensive tackle. Look at that. And they do a stunt. They take Freeney out and bring him in. And I'll tell you what, was that beautiful? Now they're going to kick a field goal. I didn't think they would, but you get you need a field goal anyway. Well, when it's fourth down and a thousand, you have to try it. Stover has missed two. How about three? Stover has missed three. 38, 47, and 45. The Boo Birds are out in Baltimore. It's still 17 to nothing. 17 nothing. Colts over the Ravens. And the usually reliable Matt Stover has missed three field goals tonight. None of them chip shots, but certainly makeable for a kicker of his caliber. And now the Colts will take over with 13.46 to go in the game. James. Hey Manning's last touchdown you'll see on pass track. Watch what he does with his head. He looks to the left. He pumps real quick. Now he'll find Ben Utek. You see him moving down the middle of the field. And look at pass track. Tell you where he's putting the ball. Throws it away from the defender. And all the Colts care about now is trying to pick up a couple of first downs here and there and burn time off that clock. Well, I had guys coming on off the field and on the field. They were getting Peter Bowler back on the field. And as they did, Peyton Manning just went up to the line of scrimmage, got everybody set, and they went on a quick count. That's the advantage of being at the line of scrimmage. Defenses have a tough time substituting. It's just a marvel to watch in action. I mean, he's going to get an advantage out of anything he can possibly think of. Blitz coming. Throws short and it was good he did because Dion had jumped the route and was ready to pick that one. Dion Sanders is playing the nickel back position. Now, for those of you that don't understand the nickel, that's the guy that usually covers a slot receiver. It didn't make sense in his in his career to do that because you don't want to take your best cover guy and just stick him in the middle. Now he's willing to do anything he can for this team and he has to learn every position now. He just can't sit outside and be a cornerback. And he admitted how hard it is to make that switch. Hunter Smith as they came after him. Sam's driven all the way back inside the 10. Flag is down. Sam's with an escort. The punter, the only one left. Doesn't matter, it's coming back. And Hunter Smith slows him up. They get him at the two. Now we check the penalty. An 88 yard return after a 50 yard kick. It's coming back. Boy, penalties, missed opportunities, missed scoring opportunities have been the story of the night for the Ravens. You know, there's a lot of times when you say missed opportunities and penalties and things, and I tell you, it was a, B.J. Sam's what a great run. But a lot of times, go ahead. During the return, illegal block in the back, 49. During the, on the return team, 10-yard penalty. Receivers will keep the ball. First down. Timeout. Chad, Chad Williams, Williams, the safety, clearly got him in the back. That flag cost them 86 yards. Chiefs look good today. It's just, just one of the shockers we had today. Wright throws another completion to Mark Clayton. Let's get an update on Kyle Bowler. Here's Susie. Well, Mike, the good news is it's not as dire as it appeared. Bowler sacked hard by Larry Triplett, taken down to the ground. They were working on his leg, carried off, x-rays taken on his right foot. The picture showed a hyper-extended right big toe out for the game, but he'll be reevaluated. All right, Susie, thanks very much. Here's Jamal Lewis out to the 28-yard line. And, of course, the speculation, particularly in Baltimore, will start immediately. 
you know, you take a look at what uh, Anthony Wright has done tonight, and a lot of the writers here, a lot of the, the talk radio people are going to go, this is the guy who ought to be playing quarterback for the Ravens. Mike, let me tell you, I hurt my big toe. That is, that is an injury, from my personal experience, that is very difficult because it's your plant foot, and your feet and your legs are so vital in how you throw the football. It'll be a while before Kyle Bowler gets a chance to be able to throw the football and quarterback this team again. Oh, he throws the out, nearly picked off by Strickland, who made a dive for it and had it in his hands. Boy, Donald Strickland played this thing perfectly, and he just knew it. It's like he was in the huddle, and he knew it was coming. What do you think of the Colts' defense? I mean, right now, they're pitching a shutout. Well, I, you know, they're, in this game, you think about three plays in this, this game. McAllister's missed interception. It would have been gone. The five yards, hands to the face by the by the Ravens defense. Uh, Dale Carter. Dale Carter. And the clip flag on, on this play here on the on the kickoff return or the punt return. Missed opportunity. Yes, indeed. Right out in the flat. Oh, and boy, the Colts have just covered <laughs> anything wide. Wilcox is drilled again. Thornton got there as well as Jason David. They built this defense on speed, and they're showing it. Well, that, remember, when Tony Dungy was in Tampa Bay, he had certain personalities on the defense. You know, I, I thought that defense got special when they added a Simeon Rice, even though Tony wasn't there. But that's your Dwight Freeney. Now, all of a sudden, Warren Sapp is really uh, Corey, Corey Simon. Simon. He's that three-technique tackle. You get Booger McFarland, and that's where you get Larry Triplett. So this defense is starting to look like what Tony had when he was in Tampa. Plus, he has a couple of young defensive backs, Marlon Jackson, who was their first-round draft choice. He's a corner. He wasn't able to play tonight because of a shoulder injury. And their second-round draft choice, Kelvin Hayden, who they expect to contribute a lot on special teams Holding this year. 42, defense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. That's Jason, Jason David. David. That and the what they have done in the last three years is they have used a lot of their draft choices on defense. Obviously, the offense doesn't need to be upgraded very much. Well, well they talk about the, you know, the Colts not having a very good defense. They forgot to tell these guys. <laughs> they don't believe it. That may be the first mistake they've made on defense tonight. And there's okay, Brock. He's Lane played Brock. pretty well tonight, oh, too. The whole defensive line has. Yep. I mean, you've got four guys on that defensive line that have just been attacking. I mean, I always look at them kind of is, is a, is a run blitz on their way to the quarterback and they seem to pick up the runners right on the way so they, they don't skip a beat but they run into one they tackle yes. right? <laughs> second 12 four man run oh. Mason oh what an addition he is been a quality receiver for a long long time Derek Mason since 2003 has 191 catches coming into this game. That's number two only to Torrey Holt in the entire NFL. And what a nice job by Anthony Wright. Watch how he hangs in the pocket. Looks down the field sets. He's getting pounded as he lets it go. And it's a perfectly thrown ball over the corner in front of the safety. Right out of the shotgun. Throws this one behind, and the Ravens want interference as Clayton thought he had position and also thought he was held. Well, Strickland, number 30, was the guy, and he, he's getting all kinds of hand slaps now. <laughs> he, he latched on pretty early. You know, a, uh, you, know you, you just... All right, here's the throw. And... No, he's there. He puts his arm in and knocks the ball away. This Pretty is good. excellent coverage. Step for step. You bet. And the Ravens continue to try to get there. One of the Colts is hurt, and it looked like it's Strickland as he tried to make the tackle. Wilcox has had a pretty good night at tight end. Anthony Wright has made some throws where... This time, Cato June tries to get a hand on it, but it just gets by. I mean, the ball has enough zip on it that the Colt defenders just can't quite get there to knock it down. He's had three or four of them that have gotten right by the defenders. One of those guys that always throws a beautiful looking ball, too. Oh, 
right zips this one and it went by heap and short of Clayton. I'm going to tell you something Joseph if you don't think tomorrow morning there is going to be a quarterback controversy in this town you're crazy well, because here comes Todd heap now off the line of scrimmage. And Anthony Wright, look at this ball. I mean, this ball is being fired. He well, didn't have a chance at it, I don't think. Let me just say this, Paul. It's going to be a long time before Kyle Bowler's ready to drop back and throw a football game, I believe, based upon a big, big toe right. problem. I mean, Deion Sanders had a toe problem. It cost him a year of football. So, I mean, it just it depends okay, okay. on how severe it is and how bad it is. But I can tell you, if it's the right foot, it becomes a problem trying to throw the football. Wright sets in the pocket, and that one is dropped by Clayton. You know the thing about it is when you talk to Brian Billick and you and you talk to Fossil and these guys and Ozzie Newsom, they are totally committed to Kyle Bowler. Now when Bowler's getting ready to come back, I, I just wonder if, if Anthony Wright is moving this team and we're winning, you can't change him. And he probably won't. And don't remember, Brian Billick has gone through a lot of quarterbacks, whether it was in Minnesota or here. He's had a lot of guys line up and play for him. I thought Kyle Bowler played real solid tonight. Right intercepted by Brackett the middle linebacker the goal line back across the 20 they love him because of the speed he's showing right there that's the second pick for the middle linebacker <laughs> the Colts defense holds again they continue to lead by 17. That Colts defensive unit sitting there and they look like they are very proud of themselves and rightfully so they are pitching a shutout. They haven't shut anybody out since December of 97 114 games ago. Right now they're on the verge of it. They have played extremely well tonight against the Ravens here in Baltimore. Ron Meeks their defensive coordinator said they wanted to get more physical. They sure have. Andrew and James up to about the 33. Let's go to Susan. Mike, let's dispel the notion that the Colts are obsessed with the Patriots. Tony Dungy told us last night his first rule of thumb, forget about your last game. And that was instilled in him when he was a rookie. He showed up at the Steelers. They had won back-to-back -back Super Bowls, and nobody wore their rings. Chuck Knoll treated them all like rookies. It was the fundamentals, blocking and tackling. His Colts have the same attitude. It's a brand new season. And you know, Susie, we followed up that conversation last night by pointing out that Bill Belichick has done the same thing. He doesn't believe in going out and defending a title. You're going out and trying to win one the next year. It has nothing to do with the one before. And I think that's the only attitude you can have. But I'll tell you, Tony Dungy would feel a lot better if they could beat the New England Patriots, okay? Oh, sure. I mean, you know, you don't, you're, you're afraid. What Tony's afraid of is that his football team becomes focused on just the Patriots and they forget about everybody in their division. They forget about the Jacksonvilles and the Tennessees and the people they have to play in their division or the Baltimore Ravens tonight. I mean, every game is important. Like Peyton said, you know, you want to get this first one under your belt. So you have a shot at home field down the road. I'll tell you, they are not obsessed with the New England Patriots. When you talk to them, they're not. Yeah, I mean, you know, we are. it's a bad thing. We are. The media is, but they aren't. They can't be. And Bill Polian told Paul before tonight's game that they had just given Tony Dungy a new three year contract that would take him through. Uh, let's see, that it would be 2009. You know, I'll tell you, the happiest guy on this Indianapolis Colts entire football team has got to be Peyton Manning watching that defense. I mean, he's oh, waited a absolutely. long time. That's a great point. I mean, it, he's been waiting a long time to see the, have his defense keep giving him the ball back, stopping people, giving him the ball back, giving him opportunities. They didn't take advantage of many in the first half, but they sure did in the second half. And Indy's offense puts so much pressure on other teams. I mean, they really take other offenses out of what they'd like to do. That'll be on Marvin Harrison, the only wide receiver. Using every second on that play clock they can. Here's Edger and James. What a wonderful, yeah. just absolutely superb all around running back to you. When you talk about Jamal Lewis, you don't want to tackle him with one arm because of how big he is. But Edger and James is one of those guys that you better put him on the ground. 
not only, you know, what Peyton said, I thought was really amazing. It, it repeats something earlier about his blocking. He will stone people blocking. But Ray Lewis said, you talk about the one dimension that the Colts have, it's Edwin James. Receiving the ball, running with the ball, blocking. He does everything for this football team. It really helps Peyton's play action. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely right. I mean, if you don't have a guy like him, the play action doesn't mean a whole lot. Edgerin again. Thomas and Demps come through to make the tackle. And he is up there on one list. This is just hard to imagine that anybody is above Jim Brown on anything, but Edgerin James, yards from scrimmage per game for his career ahead of the legendary Jim Brown. Of course, Jim Brown owns virtually every other rushing record there is. Rushes per game, yards per carry. And only played, what, seven years? Nine. Nine years. I mean, didn't play like uh, some guys play for 10, 11, 12 years. No, nope. walked away, said, I've got other things to do, and has gone on to do them. I love the dirty dozen. <laughs> That's one of the things he did. And right now, the Colts, you know, are in a situation where with the, all the money that they have put into other players with a long-term deal with Peyton Manning, with Marvin Harrison, a couple of other guys, they're going to have to pay Freeney uh, a, a whole lot of money on the defensive side of the ball. There's only so much money to go around, and Edger and James may not be the recipient of one of those huge contracts. I think he has to be. Reggie Wayne's another one that's in there, the wide right. receiver. He's, he's getting ready for free agency, and the thing is, is Edrin James is at eight million dollars. It's the average of the top five is the franchise tag next year that goes up 20 percent. So if they tag him again it's ten million. That's an awful lot of money to commit off of your cap to one player without having a chance to spread it out over a six or seven year period. And remember he's a young guy. You're not talking about a 30 year old running back. No and I think that's why they will either work out a long term deal so they can spread that money out. Or he's going to have to go somewhere else. I don't think they can afford to franchise. Well, and you think about what he did in this game. Last year, he gained 36 yards against this team, and it was a struggle. He's carried the ball 22 times tonight for 88 yards, and it may not sound like a whole lot to everybody. It is against that defense. <laughs> but it is against that defense, and he knows it, and they know it. See, that's the other thing, too, is Indianapolis is going to get a new stadium. So what they're going to wind up with is they're going to wind up with a revenue-producing facility so that they should be able to afford an Edron James and a Dwight Freeney. Boy, there's another good point, too. End over end punt, and the Ravens will take over with only 337 left. So the Ravens with Anthony Wright at quarterback for the injured Kyle Bowler. Next week, we get a chance to see the New Orleans Saints against the New York Giants, who played extremely well today. Tom Coughlin's second year there. That will be technically a home game for the Saints. You know, you know when you think about today's games, and you're talking about throughout the league, about a big defensive day for teams that, that, that really were not counted on for defense. The Lions held the Packers to three points. They Amazing. were not considered. The Chiefs held the Jets to seven points. And the Colts are pitching a shot out here. And these are teams that are not known yeah, for who, defense. Who would have guessed? Right. This is oh, it's 05. It's a new year. Right? You can't base anything off of what you saw before. That's why Tony Dungy says to his team, it's don't a look year. about yeah, don't think about last year. Last year has nothing to do with why dwell on what you know, this team went 0 and 5 in the preseason. Do they look like an 0 and 5 team in the preseason? I don't what, think so. What did New England and Philadelphia do last year in the preseason? Do you have any idea? Does anybody remember what they did, the two teams that went to the Super Bowl? Nothing. They were each one and three in the preseason. Didn't seem to hurt them too much. No, it doesn't. I mean, preseason means to me it means nothing. And I think it, what it one well, of the things has proved this year. Paul, here's you don't the need other two games. Here's the other thing. The first game is so overblown in importance. I mean, there will be people writing tomorrow, the Ravens are written off for the year. You know, because they lost his first game. And here's another pick. And it's Gary Brackett. That's his third. And this one's for a touchdown. No, it's Cato June. Cato June just baited Anthony Wright. He threw the last two balls in the middle of the football field, and all Cato June did was read his eyes. Just slides right over. And so you could say now he's Derek Brooks. So what Tony Dungy is getting is he's starting to get the blueprint of the players 
that had the abilities that he had when they were in Tampa Bay. 227 pound outside linebacker Thornton on the other side is 230 bracket in the middle is 235 so this is a very small by today's standard set of linebackers but quick and, and extremely again it fits the mold of what Tony Dungy wants on his defensive team and Ron Mix their defensive coordinator isn't it amazing when you play a team when you walk into their stadium now the Baltimore Ravens and everybody in this business talks about their defense how good they are and they totally ignore the Indianapolis Colts defense and all you hear about is Peyton Manning and Edgerrin James and well, Marvin sure. Harrison right sure so this defense I mean you take a look at this defense and what they've done tonight I mean they they are so and so good that was Harper tipping the ball this is Freeney sacking the quarterback watch this hit hello and then here is where they hurt Kyle Bowler, the triplet, and then the interception by Brackett again, his second. But I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Someone ought to pay attention to this defense after tonight. And remember, this team is not only built for speed, but the surface they play on in Indianapolis complements the speed aspect of them as a football team. Well, you could forgive anybody for overlooking the, uh, the Colts defense. It's not something that has been... Uh, looked at very hard in the last few years and not found wanting. Yeah, and you know the thing about it is, one man doesn't make the difference. Corey Simon did. Simon did not make the difference in this in this defense, but he sure helps. He's a presence in there that they have to deal with. You can't just single block him. Well, guys, look at this. The secondary: Donald Strickland's in his third year, Jason David in his second, Bob Sanders in his second, Mike Doss, who suspended, is in his third, Nick Harper's in his fifth. Right. I mean, this is an. Ex and then you got Marlon Jackson and Kelvin Hayden, two rookies from this year. This defense will continue to get better and better and better. They're extremely young. Dwight Freeney, fourth year. Brackett, third year. Larry Triplett, fourth year. Raheem Brock, fourth year. But don't, you know, now I just take the reverse for a second and take a look at the offensive line with the, when they got Peyton Manning. They had a young offensive line, Joe, that had to develop. And they said, well, it's going to take a little bit of time. Well, they did develop. Now you've got a young defense that's going to develop because they're going to get better and better and better. And when they're on their surface, look out. I mean, this is definitely a football team that's on a mission. They've gotten close. They haven't gotten to the prize yet. Sam's at the 12. Taken down just outside the 30. He changed the entire complexion of Pittsburgh's offense. It is now an explosive running game. He up to the 38. Do you remember in this game? I mean, we're going to talk about their defense, the Colts. Do you remember in this game, one guy making a tackle? It always seems to be two, three, four. Great hustle. It oh, better man. Be. It better be when they sit and look at film. Rally to the ball. Right nearly picked off again, and that would have been a great catch if Moore could have come up with it. Anthony Wright is now going to get an opportunity to be able to work in practice and get himself ready for uh, for the foreseeable future. That's shut out in 97 it was against the Dolphins 41 nothing job. It would be remarkable for them and what a boost for the confidence of that defense if they could pull off the shutout tonight although shutout or no they have certainly served notice that this is going to be a unit to be reckoned with Ravens trying to avoid the shutout pride is about the only thing left after the Colts have humbled them with a huge second half Derek Mason what a nice debut Mason has had tonight for the Ravens that's 23 yards I think that Derek Mason is going to do exactly what the Ravens hoped he would do he's going to give them a deep threat he's going to give them a veteran who can make plays in key situations the big thing is is Clarence Moore is going to have to step up on the other side and be a guy 
who can make plays and not drop the ball at critical times. Mason led all wideouts in the NFL last year with 96 catches tonight. Eight grabs, 99 yards right. Look out from behind. A fumble, loose ball picked up by Raheem Brock. Wait a minute. You see old Raheem throw the stiff arm? How about, how about the change of direction? He looked, <laughs> yeah. he looked like edge running. <laughs> Freeney knocks it out of his hand. Well, Dwight Freeney comes all the way around. It was Mathis, Rob I Mathis think. that did it. Yeah, Rob Mathis knocks the ball out. But Raheem Brock, I tell you what, when he picks this ball up, here he comes. Here comes Mathis around us. Look at that. He just ducked underneath. Jonathan Ogden actually tried to get a left hand on him and didn't even touch him. You know, most of the guys who were linemen, you go back to high school, some of them were fullbacks, some of them were even running backs, and every once in a while, they get that <laughs> chance to show it off again. Oh, man. It's the speed that the Colts have in that defensive yeah. line is special. Well, Freeney had 16 sacks last year. Mathis had 10 and a half. So they do have that rush ability with that speed up front. But when they add Corey Simon, they've done something. And, you know, I mean, I didn't know there was enough people here to boo. I didn't either. Indianapolis led the NFL last year with a plus 19 turnover margin. They are plus four tonight. That's a great start for the Colts. It's a great start for the Colts just about every category you can think of. Keep in mind, 45 sacks last year. One, one was by a defensive back. So you know that this defensive line has that ability. And then you spin forward and, and you, you know you think about what the the Colts are going to face you know with their schedule. It's a wonderful start for the Colts got to be a bitter pill to swallow for the Baltimore Ravens. Here's what the Colts face in the next few weeks and this is a pretty good schedule for them you would have to think maybe not a really well the Jaguars could give them a problem the Rams Beat them last year right the Rams uh, the only big time team right now that they're going to face until uh, November and they lost to the 49ers they played the Patriots and that's right what about the job that Mike Nolan has done congratulations to Mike Nolan and his San Francisco 49er great team start for that him nobody gave a prayer against against the Rams and the Rams had a chance to actually get in position to tie that today came back from a big deficit and wound up losing at 25 28. I'd give Tony Dungy an extension every week. Yeah I'd give him another three <laughs> years after this one. How about a rolling extension. <laughs> exactly. Every, yeah, every time you win you get another one. Well the Ravens did a brilliant job in the first half. Manning is going back to throw and overthrow. Now, people would ask the question, why would the ball? That's what I was going to ask well, you. Well, <laughs> Manning did basically what you're trying to do, keep the clock or, you know, continue to try and make plays. The Ravens called the timeout because one of the differentials when it comes to playoffs is points. And it's, it's important. And so now if you get them to punt and you manage to get seven points on the board, you don't know if you go head to head with somebody down the road if you're the Baltimore Ravens and all of a sudden those seven points become the difference of whether or not you make it to the playoffs or not. I mean, people just don't roll over and stop. Little pooch punt. Oh, is he so good at that? Oh, he is just so good. That's down to the one. Great job by Rand Carthon. Well, there's a penalty on the play, so they're going to have to kick it again. With 119 left. He might actually have to punt this one with the nose up. First one we saw do that was Darren Bennett. It's off a nice spiral this time. Sam's driven back to the eight yard line. Oh. Breaks a tackle, breaks another one. BJ Sam still on his feet out of bounds at the 38. 24 yard return. Well, they call him the triplets. Peyton Manning ends up throwing for 254 yards after a slow start. A couple of touchdowns. Edgerin James, 88 yards rushing against a tremendous rush defense. And Marvin Harrison, 
six catches 69 yards and a score. I find it interesting talking to Peyton Manning that last year when I asked him you know how many touchdown passes you want to throw he had a specific number he had 40 touchdowns nine interceptions 70 percent this year all he's focusing on is winning football games doesn't care about the touchdown pass I still think he has to get an excess of 40 for this offense to be effective because that's what they are right again underneath Dinkins gets it up across midfield. Darnell out of pit. Gain of 16. The clock continues to run down to 41 seconds in front of a virtually empty 71,000 seat stadium. Catch by Clarence Moore out of bounds to stop the clock. 23 yard game. You know, it's really funny when you when you ask about uh, Peyton Manning and, and, and Marvin Harrison, you know, and why he threw that pass on on a third down. When they came off the field, Peyton was talking to Marvin like, you know, you were supposed to move. It. Yeah. And they're still Go up. They're still coaching and talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, it's the end of the game. We're up 24 points, but you're supposed to you're supposed to read this guy and move yourself back up the field. And if you were open, uh, to, you know, you had a touchdown. If I'm would throwing you, it, you better catch it. You just imagine those are two guys who talk about playing perfect games, even though nobody ever will. But that's what they're looking for. I'll tell you what this cold defense has done tonight. When the guys have caught those short passes, they've had defensive backs, linebackers, and actually in corners just tattooing these guys. <laughs> it's a defense that will not give you big plays. I mean, it just won't. The thing that the thing that this defense that Tony Dungy has that he didn't have in Tampa is he has an offense to go with it. Absolutely. And, you know, and people sort of knock this defense, but remember the playoff game against the Patriots. Peyton Manning did they not played very well. Peyton Manning did not have a very good game. Right. I mean, Peyton was the one that threw some interceptions. It had nothing to do with the defense. So, you know, he's going to be fine. You know that Peyton Manning's going to be sure. okay. And let's pay some let's give the props where that you know this this Colt defense isn't as bad as everybody perceived it to be. How about old Eli today? They won big, big. big. The Ravens have used their last time out. There's Peyton's numbers against the Pats. And too, way too many interceptions. Not that we're just talking about the Colts and the Patriots. And over Mason, coverage by Harper. We're down to 20 seconds. There's a guy that's done a great job when they too is Harper. Hasn't he? Oh, man, he's the guy that caused, caused the first interception. Anthony Wright coming off the bench 18 out of 30 197 yards 30 passes just over a quarter right and in for the touchdown, Dan Wilcox. And they still haven't shut anybody out. No, but they got within 13 seconds of it. Yeah, and, they did. And the Ravens accomplished what they wanted to when they called the timeouts when Peyton Manning wanted to kneel down and just run the clock out. Wilcox has had a big night. Seven catches, 78 yards, or eight catches, 78 yards. Nice hands. He's out of Appalachian State, third year tight end. I'd give him a great combination with he and he. If he comes back healthy, and here's a derisive cheer from the Ravens fans that are still left. Both of them. As they finally get on the board, exactly. Let's go to Susie. Two halves. The first half was the battle of heavyweights. The Ravens with the big stuff on fourth and one. That new look D. Lots of motion. Chris McAllister, the near interception, but close just won't cut it against Peyton Manning. In the second half, he took off. Hitting Marvin Harrison, spreading the ball around. Hey, his tight ends aren't here. Marcus Pollard left. Dallas Clark is out, but he hits young Ben Utek. And the Colts roll. Boy, do they ever. And it's not it's not going to be anything when you see the Peyton Manning through for uh, mid two fifties couple yeah. of touchdowns that's not going to shake anybody else up 
But when you see the yardage they gave up and the fact that they didn't give up a score till 13 seconds left to go in the game, people are going to go, uh oh. Uh, you, yeah, and you know, you know that this offense is going to be aggressive. You know, Tom Moore has stressed for seven years, now eight, to Peyton Manning, don't ever back off. And you know Peyton will study it and he will not face another defense like Baltimore has tried to throw up against him. He'll be able to figure out a lot easier where people are. Now they'll go for the onside kick the Colts recover and that ought to take care of it. Marvin Harrison gets hit again one more time. <laughs> Get whacked in the head I'll one more you, he's time. He's got to be sore. He's got to be thinking, can I get off the hands team, please? Boy, he is just, I mean, you watch these guys. They just do everything right. They run routes. They never get into join contests. The first, the, the one time I saw Marvin show the emotion was the shot that Ray Lewis put on him when he ran that in pattern. He got knocked around, bounced down, slammed the ball down. First time, one of the rare times I've ever seen him. Right. Peyton Manning has taken 98% of the snaps for this club since he has come into the league. His durability is another one of the great things about this all pro quarterback. 24 to 7. Our final score from Baltimore. Stay tuned for Sports Center. Coming up next for Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, Susie Culver, and our entire crew. This is Mike Patrick. Good night from Baltimore. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.